Pete Buttigieg proves to be a complete failure at his job. Chicago schools are challenging Baltimore at being the worst in the country. Plus, the consequences of the left's racial division strategy are now being felt. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Pete Buttigieg and the environmental disaster occurring in East Palestine, Ohio. We covered this story at the beginning of the week, and now it's finally getting the exposure it deserves. And now that more people are paying attention, we can see who is doing a good job and who is failing. In particular, America's Transportation Secretary, Mayor Pete, appears clueless. Remember, this was the guy who said he was qualified because he always liked planes and trains. Now, with a huge train disaster, Mayor Pete is AWOL. Don't get me wrong, Buttigieg was somewhere, just not anywhere near East Palestine, where the residents are being exposed to not just one or two chemicals as first reported, but a host of chemicals that have gone into the ground, contaminated the water, and were burned in a massive toxic fireball. While this is going on, Buttigieg was saying this. Uh, I mean, if you look at what the American transportation systems have faced in the last two or three years, we've faced issues from container shipping to airline cancellations. Mm -hmm. Now we got balloons. That's right. Um, Yes, all sorts of transportation issues, and Buttigieg seems incapable of handling any of them. Regarding this disaster in Ohio, Buttigieg's first actual comments on the matter were to blame former President Trump. But I mean, you have to do that. That's just part of the Democrat playbook. And he also added this. Uh, While this uh, horrible situation has gotten a particularly high amount of attention, there are roughly 1,000 cases a year of a train derailing. Oh my gosh. This derailment is getting particularly high amount of attention only because programs like this, and finally, the big networks are covering it. This is a disaster. But hey, rather than talk about it, Mayor Pete would rather tell us that there are just too many white construction workers. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color, that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs, don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. Right. Unreal. But that's Pete Buttigieg. And meanwhile, residents in East Palestine, Ohio, are scared, and they're being told by the EPA to come on back. Everything's fine. Yeah, right. All right. Next, let's talk about another Democrat-run city in education. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about the Chicago public school system. Because when I previously reported on the complete failure of the government-run schools in Baltimore, Chicago officials must have been saying, hey, hold my beer because their results are just as bad or even worse. Recall this report from the last show. The results of the Maryland Comprehensive Assessment Program revealing in at least 23 of Baltimore City schools, not a single student can do math at grade level, marking the city's math scores the lowest in the state. 23 schools with zero students proficient in math, zero. Public officials dodged the media when confronted, but parents had plenty to say. Nichelle Watkins, just one of many concerned parents tired of suffering in silence. I can't afford no thousand dollar tutor from Sylvan, but that's what he needs. And our kids are not caught up, but we're passing them. We're passing them, but they can't read. Terrible. Horrible. Well, that's Baltimore. In Chicago, the results are just as tragic when you think about it. Here's a report from a couple of months ago referencing Chicago Public Schools Superintendent Pedro Martinez. When the reading and math test scores came in last year, it was a gut punch to teachers, Martinez says. Only 21% of CPS kids meet or exceed English standards. In math, the number is 16%. In black and brown communities, it's way worse. This is unbelievable. Across the Chicago Public School System, only 16% of students are proficient in math. 
16%. It's like the teachers are trying not to teach. How can only one in six kids be capable of doing math? Now, more data are being revealed and the results are stunning. As reported by the Daily Caller, in 55 Chicago public schools, not one student met grade level expectations in either math or reading in the 2021-22 school year. Let's break that down. The Daily Caller reports that out of 649 Chicago public schools, 22 schools have zero students who met grade level expectations for reading, while no students were proficient in math in 33 schools during the 2021-2022 school year. Baltimore, Chicago, the list goes on and on. Yet people keep electing Democrats in these cities and they keep getting the same results. All right, next let's talk about what is going on in America's government-run schools and it's clearly not education, it's indoctrination. The left is so focused on dividing Americans by race and those efforts are taking root. Rather than coming together as Americans, judging each other by merit and effort and civility, the left promotes suspicion, division and hostility. At every possible opportunity, the left plays the race card, and in that wake, we see verbal, emotional, and physical attacks all based on race, and it's getting worse. Here's an example from a police report filed at an elementary school. The report says it happened on the playground during recess when a group of black students had gathered several white students to a specific spot on the playground and forced them to say Black Lives Matter against their will, with some kids recording this. Police wrote the principal here told officers a few students who tried avoiding the situation were chased down and either escorted, dragged, or carried to the spot on the playground. Officers said one student was punched in the head. Tolerance? Inclusion? No. This is intimidation and violence, all resulting from the left's obsession with racial division. Critical race theory being pushed in schools isolates whites as evil oppressors and everyone else as a victim. How do you think that ideology is going to manifest itself within society at all, and children in particular? The left knows we are seeing it. Rather than a great American melting pot where people see each other as one great team comprised of people from different and amazing cultures, the left perpetuates a world of villains. Here's reaction from the mom of one of the students who is a victim. And I kept asking him all weekend, are you okay? And he kept saying, yeah, I'm just tired. And then when I got the phone call Monday about it, I was like, that explained a lot. So that's an example from an elementary school. How about at college? The College Fix publication is reporting that Auburn University is now conducting an investigation of chat groups in which lists of derogatory terms for white people were openly shared and commented on. These lists and terms were spread through campus chat groups with students listing some of the particular terms as their favorites. Slurs such as delusional lice, colonizing vultures, and albino monkeys were spread in these chats sponsored by a race-based group, a student group. Now, Auburn University says the situation is being investigated, but it is only organizations like the College Fix and Turning Point USA that are bringing it to light. Imagine the national coverage this story would be getting if these lists focus on non-whites. All right. Next, let's talk about what's going on at Asbury University in Kentucky, because with all the bad news that seems to be surrounding us every day, this revival, this embrace of God is sending a powerful message around the country that there is something bigger, something better, something calling us to be back on the path of faith. God has been moving among the students and faculty, and people are traveling to the university to join in this move of God. Well, one student told CBN News he prays this revival when, will encourage churches and pastors and stir up a hunger for the Lord. This gathering started over a week ago as the normal gathering of a Wednesday night chapel. What it is now is something to behold. The revival here at Asbury is now in its sixth night as hundreds of people have come from near and far to just enjoy the presence of God. Even though it's almost midnight, this auditorium is still packed with people that are still coming in. Wow, you can just feel the power. It's amazing. And what they are seeing in Asbury University is not something they have seen before. 
In the last two evenings, we've estimated well over 3,000 people that are here and at these different locations uh, to worship the Lord. Were you prepared for this? No, there is no, there's no playbook for this. The fire that started here at Asbury is reportedly spreading as students from nearly two dozen other college campuses have come here to take part in the services. And what got started here a week ago is showing no signs of stopping. I hope this movement continues to spread. The counter to the leftist wokeism and radical racial ideology of division has to be more than just political. It has to be cultural. It has to be spiritual. Maybe this is a wake-up call. If so, I hope and pray that Americans don't sleep through it. Okay, so we've covered Pete Buttigieg failing Chicago schools and the leftist strategy of racial division. We need to ask these folks, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. First up on relaxed brain, we have CNN's Don Lemon, who took sexism to a whole new level with comments regarding former UN ambassador and now presidential candidate Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is in her prime, sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. What do you talk, wait. I, that's not according to me. Prime for what? I, it depends. I mean, it's just like prime. If you look it up, it'll. If you look, if you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say twenties, thirties, and forties. What an idiot! Kamala Harris is fifty-eight. Amy Klobuchar is sixty-two. Elizabeth Warren is seventy-three. All of them ran for president last time with no criticism from Lemon. Nikki Haley is fifty-one, but Lemon says she is past her prime because all women are basically past their prime by then. Great move, dude. Of course, he then later apologized. The reference I made to a woman's prime this morning was inartful and irrelevant. As colleagues and loved ones have pointed out, and I regret it, a woman's age does not define her, either personally or professionally. I have countless women in my life who prove that every day. How lame. But that's Don Lemon. Then in our swampiest of the swamp category, there's Mitch McConnell, who recently commented on the most important issue going on right now. Was it the border? Inflation? Human trafficking, wages, taxes? Nope. Well, I'm going to try to help explain to the American people that defeating the Russians in Ukraine is the single most important event going on in the world right now. It will save us an enormous amount of money down the road if the Ukrainians can succeed. They're not asking for any of our personnel. They're asking us for financial help. We are just sending financial help? Yes. $29 billion worth. Oh, and what about those tanks we are sending too? Then we have these breaking headlines from the Babylon Bee. First, following on the heels of all these UFOs being shot down, there's this report. Okay, take us to a different leader, says exasperated aliens after trying to communicate with Joe Biden. All right, then as a sign the government is actually being helpful in Ohio, there's this public service announcement. Officials remind residents of East Palestine to protect themselves by getting their COVID booster. <laughs> Jeez, that sounds about right. And then, of course, there's Mayor Pete. Pete Buttigieg promises to investigate Ohio Railway chemical spill for signs of racism. <laughs> that's just great. And I wouldn't be surprised if that one turns out to be real. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show, so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Monday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.